Okay, so here we are um, with part C of lesson one, which is on refraction. And <clears throat> this is a review of concepts in Ontario. Of course, you should be learning in grade 10. Um, but because everyone has a, a slightly different experience in grade 10 science, we're going to recap it here. Refraction is a phenomenon that arrives, arises because light travels at different speeds in different mediums. Okay, So if light enters a medium at a certain angle to the boundary, it's either bent away from or towards the normal, depending on the medium. So here's a little diagram. We've got a, a boundary between two mediums, say air and water, or you could say air and glass. And of course, a normal is any perpendicular line to the surface. And what we would say in this case <clears throat> is that light enters, and here's a beam of light, um, which is represented by an arrow. Um, and one of two things happens. First is that the light coming in is bent towards the normal. Okay, So you can see that the angle of incidence right here and the angle of refraction right here, you can see that the angle of refraction changes. Okay, So this is, this is what we call being bent towards the normal. So the angle becomes smaller and it bends towards the normal. And this is what happens when we go from something that's less dense to something that's more dense. So for example, when we go from water sorry, from air into water, something that's less dense to more dense. This could also happen. We could also bend away from the normal. <clears throat> and that happens when we go from something that's more dense to something that's less dense. How do we define density, you know, optical density? Um, we use something that, that is given the symbol N, and that's called the refractive index. And it's a measure of how much light slows down when it enters a medium. It's defined as the ratio of the speed of light in the vacuum and the speed of light in the medium. <clears throat> and so n is equal to c, which is the speed of light, divided by v. And you'll notice that very often, um, uh, very often n will be a number, um, say, 1.0. 2.5 or 1.52 or 1.63. Um, it'll, it'll be a number in, in and around that range. All right, so let's do uh, an example here. Calculate the index of refraction for diamond if the speed of light in diamond is 1.24 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Diamond is very optically dense. So we know the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8th. We know the speed of light in diamond, and we know that n is equal to c over v. So a quick calculation gives us that n is equal to 2.42, which really does represent a very, very optically dense um, object. Okay, so this is one of the most optically dense objects. Let's do another um, derivation here. Snell's law <clears throat> is the relationship that gives uh, it basically is, is the law that gives the relationship between the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction, and the refractive index. And here it is. It's that n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. So that's the index of refraction in the first me of the first medium times sine of the angle of incidence is equal to the index of refraction of the second medium and, the, and sine of the angle of refraction, really theta 2. So if you check out your textbook, now we've recently changed textbooks, so it won't be page 503, but there is a derivation in there, and you can check it out and see what it looks like. We're not going to derive it in this class. Find the angle of refraction for light that travels from air to diamond if the angle of incidence in the air is 20 degrees. Diagram of the situation is right here. We've got air and diamond, and of course we have an angle of incidence which is 20 degrees. You'll notice that our angles are always measured with respect to the normal, because the normal is always a straight line, and the boundary is not necessarily a straight line. So here's what we have. 
the index of refraction of air is 1. The index of refraction of diamond is 2.42. Angle of incidence is 20, and we want to know the angle of refraction. Um, so we can ask ourselves what it should be. We're going from something less dense to more dense, so we should get a smaller value for theta 2 because we should get bending towards the normal. And so we populate Snell's law with the values that we have. <clears throat> and we get theta 2 is equal to 8.1, which indeed is a much smaller angle. So our light has bent towards the normal in this case. <clears throat> and that's as expected when traveling from something less dense to something more dense. Last example um, of this lesson, um, calculate the index of refraction of, for a substance where the angle of incidence is 30 degrees, the angle of refraction is 50 degrees, and the angle of index, or sorry, the index of refraction in the second substance is 1.5. So this, again, is, is quite a straightforward a little calculation. Quick diagram just to show the index of angle of index uh, incidence and the angle of refraction. We should be getting <clears throat> an n value that's less than 1.5 because you'll notice this is bending away from the normal. And so when we do this, we rearrange and we can solve. We sub in our numbers. We get n1 is equal to 2.3. And so n1 of course, is much bigger than N2 as we expected, N1 bigger than N2 because we're going from something more dense to something less dense and we're bending away. <clears throat> so the index of refraction is 2.3 and that is your crash course on uh, refraction.